A man angrily stormed into a Target store in 2012, demanding to speak to the manager. Target had been sending his teenage daughter vouchers for baby clothes and newborn cribs, so he thought they were trying to encourage her to get pregnant. But the father apologised a few days later, as it turned out that she was already pregnant. It would later be revealed that the Target website had an algorithm that could figure out what to advertise to people based on the products they had previously purchased online. As weird as this strange kind of modern day computerised pregnancy test may be, it may very well be the future of pregnancy testing. But the methods used to test for pregnancy throughout history are even stranger than this. We'll go through some of the weird pregnancy tests of the past in this video, and the eventual development of the modern day pee on a stick test. You can tell if a woman is pregnant based on physical signs alone after about a month after conception. Early signs of pregnancy include missing your menstrual period, breast tenderness, or early morning sickness. But people have always wanted to know if a woman was pregnant or not within a few days, probably for reasons such as future planning or just pure impatience. An early example of a pregnancy test can be seen in Egypt from around 1900 BC, and even back then, they had the idea of using urine to test for pregnancy. There's a text from the Berlin Papyrus which instructed a woman to pee in a bag of either wheat or barley seeds, and if they were pregnant, the seeds would germinate. The method was actually tested by scientists in 1963, who showed that pregnant urine actually caused germination 70% of the time, so the Asia Egyptians were definitely onto something. Some other ancient tests involving pee included dipping a nail into the urine to see if it would rust, which indicated pregnancy. In another test, urine was mixed with wine and it was observed to see if any reaction occurred. But urine wasn't the only substance used to detect pregnancy. We have two very strange pregnancy tests from the writings of the Greek physician Hippocrates. In his first test, a woman was told to insert an onion inside her vagina before sleeping if she thought she was pregnant, and if she was, then her breath would smell of onions when she woke up. The idea behind this was that in pregnancy the uterus opened up, so the onion scent travelled from the vagina to the mouth. His second test involved giving honey to a woman, once again before bed, and if she started to get stomach cramps and bloating, then the test was positive. But aside from these few odd examples, the history of pregnancy testing is dominated by urine. Urine was a waste product of the four humours according to Hippocrates, so a lot could be told about a person's health by inspecting the urine. From the early middle ages till around the 18th century, a field of medicine called uroscopy became quite common in the known world. A group of people who became known as piss prophets claimed that by simply looking at the urine, they can diagnose a wide range of diseases from all parts of the body. They made entire careers by looking at things like the presence of blood, pus and the colouring of the urine, and used this information to diagnose things like pregnancy and other medical conditions. Of course, they were as well respected as more traditional doctors, as they often engaged in superstition and fortune telling with the urine. Even after the piss prophets fell out of favour, looking for signs of pregnancy in the urine didn't. A scientist in France presented his findings of a substance called kystine in a medical conference in 1831. Kystine was a pearly white substance, which was supposed to have formed on the surface of a pregnant woman's urine when left to stand for a few days. The method was tested with mixed results at several hospitals and labs over the next few decades, but it ultimately failed to gain traction in the medical community. The breakthrough in pregnancy testing came in the early 20th century, 
as the physiological mechanism of pregnancy began to be more understood. Hormones were recently discovered and progesterone in particular was found to play a major role in menstruation and pregnancy. The hormone progesterone was found to be produced by the corpus luteum, a structure in the ovaries that forms after ovulation. Two German doctors were then able to isolate a hormone that was present in the blood and urine of pregnant women and it seemed to stimulate the activity of the corpus luteum during pregnancy. The hormone would later be called HCG and was found to be produced by the placenta as early as 8 days after ovulation. The Aschheim Zondek pregnancy test was first performed in 1927. The test involved injecting a woman's urine into a mouse and then dissecting it after a few days. In a positive test, a heavily bleeding corpus luteum could be observed in the mouse's ovaries. The test was 98% sensitive, which is quite surprising for a test that essentially boils down to making a mouse horny with your urine. The test was slightly modified in 1931, and rabbits were used instead of mice. So for the first time ever, a doctor could reliably tell if a woman was actually pregnant before she missed the period. However, to conduct a test you had to kill a rabbit, so people started to look for other ways to detect pregnancy. A test that became mainstream was similar to the rabbit test, but was performed on frogs instead. An injection of a pregnant woman's urine caused the frog to lay eggs only 12 hours later, so this test had the advantage of being faster and not requiring any animals to be killed. The test rapidly spread worldwide between the late 30s and the 70s and the African clawed toad was exported in large quantities to Europe and America. But the widespread exporting of the Xenopus toad had an unfortunate side effect as they were carriers of a deadly fungus which killed many frogs and other amphibian animals. This has resulted in a massive decline in amphibian populations worldwide with now up to a third of amphibian species being globally threatened. As well as these environmental effects, the testing on animals were also very expensive, so doctors wanted to find a cheaper method of testing pregnancy. Something used very briefly to detect pregnancy in the 60s and 70s were a few drugs that were chemically similar to the combined contraceptive pills in use today. A pregnant woman would have no response after taking the drug, whereas a non-pregnant woman would menstruate again after a few days. It was a very accurate method of detecting pregnancy, but was quickly abandoned due to fears that it might cause birth defects. The medical ultrasound also became widely available in 1961, so parents had the privilege of seeing their baby before it was ever born but it was only reliable in detecting pregnancy after about 5 weeks. The turning point in pregnancy testing came with the development of immunoassays. With immunoassays, you could detect the presence of a substance using antibodies, which is how the pregnancy tests of today work. The first antibody test for pregnancy was developed in 1960, and it involved attaching anti-HCG antibodies to sheep's blood, then mixing it with a woman's urine to see if they would stick together. The antibody tests nowadays involve a much simpler chemical reaction, which produces a change in colour in the presence of HCG. They were first made available for home use in 1971. The drawback of these first home kits is that they resembled the high school chemistry experiment, took 2 hours to get a result and were only 75% sensitive when performed by non-medical professionals. The current pionistic pregnancy test first came to use in the 90s. They are incredibly cheap, can give you results within a minute, over 99% sensitive and can detect pregnancy less than 14 days after ovulation. 
So even though it seems like pregnancy testing has reached its peak, I can easily see a future where a pregnancy test could detect pregnancy immediately after conception and even tell you the gender of the fetus and who the father is. So pregnancy tests are like many other aspects of medicine, in that despite how advanced they appear, there's always room for more development.